Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some notable or best Toyotas to buy, used ones, and the worst used Toyotas to buy. This comes from my experience as a Toyota Master Diagnostic Technician. Currently working at a Toyota dealerships, I see all these cars and I see the ones that when they come in, they have barely anything needed. And the ones that come in and they need so much, they're not even worthy of the name Toyota. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into it. Let's start with the best Toyotas to buy. And we're gonna break this into two categories. The first one is, the middle-aged ones, let's say that. The cars that are out of warranty, and I will include the whole generation of that model. And then the second category is oldies. The cars that are over 10 years old, that are still very relevant and very good cars to buy today. Starting with the first category, which is middle-aged Toyotas. Toyotas that are five years plus. Some of them will be generations, so you'll see a year range. Starting with a car that is so good, I'm going to call it the hidden gem, but people yet don't buy it and Toyota is actually discontinuing the model, the Toyota Avalon. I mean, it is basically a stretch Camry. It is super reliable and one notable generation is 2013 to 2018. I mean, you can buy these used for the price of a Camry and they are so much more than a Camry. It's really a bargain, basically. They're super reliable as long as the maintenance is kept. And really, even when maintenance is questionable, they still hold. They have very low known problems, especially in the later years. The first year or two, they had a few common issues, but nothing major. You can easily take this car over 200,000 miles with really very basic maintenance. The second notable car, which I compared the Avalon to, 2015 to 2017 Toyota Camry. Now, one thing about this model is maintenance is very important because the four-cylinder engine loves to burn oil if it is not maintained properly. Properly in my book, 5,000 mile oil changes are every six months. Depends on your driving style. But if you find one that has been well maintained and the price is not crazy, these are really good cars. Now, to fairness, 2012-2014 Camrys are essentially the same mechanically. It might look a little different. It is essentially the same generation. But the only thing that plagued the 2012-14 Camrys are the torque converter shutter, which makes them a little bit down on my list. But the 15-17 Camry that has been well maintained is a top buy today and their prices are reflecting that. And just like the Camry, there is another car or SUV that is basically a Camry that is converted into an SUV, the RAV4, specifically the 2013 all the way to 2018. Notably, the better ones are 2016 to the 2018, especially the hybrid. These things are so reliable, and in the first few years, they had a few quirks, kind of like the Camry 2013 and 15 RAV4 had the similar torque converter issue. But then after 15, so 16, 18, when they had the ref refresh, the facelift, whatever you want to call it, they were really good. I mean, we rarely see these for problems. Other than maintenance, we don't really see them for much else, as long as the maintenance is kept. Maintenance is a big key with Toyota, and you're gonna see this as a pattern throughout this video. Another larger SUV that is highly desirable, and in my opinion, a star, is 2014 to 2016, Highlander. Now, I, that generation does not end there. It actually goes all the way to 19. I purposely left the 70 to 19, because in my book, mechanically at least, they're completely different generation. And 2017s are still under warranty. They did have the eight speed. People have concerns that are a lot more complicated and they really haven't been out long enough, at least the drivetrains, for me to tell you they're really stars or not. But the 2014 to 16, it is essentially nothing is new. It is a 2G RFE, the V6 model, which is the recommended one, not the four cylinder. The V6 has been out for a very long time, since 2005. That car doesn't really use a lot of new technology. Of course, maintenance needs to be kept, 
but even if the maintenance is spotty, it is still a car that can easily take you to 200,000 miles with really minimal issues. Now, before we go into the notable oldies, let's talk about a middle ground or a different category within the category, Toyota trucks. Folks, any Toyota truck you buy, they are reliable. They have their quirks here and there, but nothing major. I'm gonna name some trucks that are notably high on the list of reliability and simplicity and how much would it cost you basically to get it well over 200,000 miles, which is pennies if you really look at other models that how much they cost to take you to 200,000 miles starting with 2005 all the way to 2015 Tacomas they're really good they're very basic I mean in 2015 it is laughably basic it literally did not change throughout the whole run yeah they added a few things on the outside a few cosmetic stuff but mechanically it is exactly the same nothing changed in the tacoma and that's what made it really reliable and the other one and to me is the star of the show the toyota forerunner folks let's keep this simple from the day the forerunner was made till 2022 they're all reliable with the exception of the older ones really old ones with the 3.0 they had some head gasket issues but other than that they're really solid of course as long as the maintenance is kept you will never lose money buying a forerunner unless of course you overpay for it which even then it is such a good truck it'll the thing will just run forever basically and they're super ancient even in today 2022 model is basically the same as a 2010 and essentially in, a, in an indirect way takes back its technology to 2003 Things awesome. If you're looking to buy a forerunner of any generation, especially the latest generation, the fifth generation, as long as you're buying a good one that's been taken care of, you're not making a mistake. And equally to the forerunner, the FJ Cruiser. Fortunately, the FJ Cruiser was discontinued, and their prices will reflect that. They are, for lack of a better word, crazy. Don't overpay for an FJ Cruiser, but it is a very, very good truck. Basically, a shortened version of the forerunner. And notable in this category as well, the Tundras. Basically from the beginning of the Tundra time all the way to 2021 and we're gonna get the 22 pretty soon, which is gonna be completely different. So that might change, we'll find out. But you cannot go wrong buying a Tundra as long as it's been taken care of. They do have their issues, but overall, it does not take you a small fortune to get it over 200,000 miles. Same thing with the Sequoia, which is basically a Tundra with a closed back. Let's talk about the oldies. And the first oldie that is very dear to my heart because every time I see one of the dealership, the thing just keeps going and going and going. And it's such a nice car to sit in, to look at. It's still relevant today. 2004 to 2006 Toyota Camry V6. Now, this thing will run forever. They do have their issues with age. Of course, we're talking about a 15 plus year old car. Their issues are basic. They're very DIY friendly and they can be had for very low prices today. You go buy a Camry like that and that has been maintained, that has been taken care of. You can keep it going for another 100, 150,000 miles and it'll shock you that a 15 year old car will just keep going like that. Another very notable model, very similar to that Camry, is 2005 to 2008 Toyota Corolla. Again, the thing has its quirks, it's getting a little older, but if you buy a good example of these, you can easily, again, drive it another 100, 150,000 miles with very basic maintenance and the thing is super easy to work on if you're a DIY mechanic you know you buy an older car you're gonna want to tinker with it yourself save some money on repairs they're super simple there cannot be a simpler car than the 2005-2008 Corolla now to wrap up the oldies there is a star that is very dear to my heart and I've owned many of these they are indestructible there's only one thing that kills them really which we're going to talk about in the later part of this video the ugly part if you would that would be the 1000 and 2001 Toyota Camry notably the V6 not because it's better than the four-cylinder but it just it's a better driving experience it's such a quiet engine 
If you find one of these cars that have been well taken care of, doesn't have 400,000 miles already, these are legends of reliability. I mean, seriously, that car will last forever as long as you don't have one problem. A little bit on that in a little bit. But if you find one of these and you're looking for a very low budget car that'll keep you going for a long time, very comfortably, very reliable, actually still smooth if you find one in good shape, they are just a workhorse. The 2000 to 2001 Toyota Camry. Previous years, they're okay, but I think they really made the best version in 2000 and 2001. Now, let's start with the bad news. And a small disclaimer, if you own one of these cars and you don't agree, I'm glad that you did not have the problems because others have and things get real ugly. Starting with, in my opinion, the worst Toyota ever made. I mean, this thing is so old the day it came out. It is unbelievable. I don't know what Toyota was thinking. It was so bad that Toyota cut their normal cycle to just move it along and came out with another legend right after it. I am talking about the 1998 to 2002 not Toyota Corolla. I'm sorry if you own one of these, but they are terrible. For lack of a better word, they're terrible. They're in between two generations. The one before it was a solid legend. The one after it is a solid legend. And here comes this thing that is terrible. I mean, let's start with a few things. Rust is the biggest problem with any Toyota. Toyota makes great cars, but when you add the sprinkle of rust, things go downhill very quick. And if you don't take care of it and kind of be proactive about it, especially the older ones, the newer ones are getting much better, but the middle-aged ones and down, things are really bad with rust. And the Corolla was the worst one. I mean, you start from the engine. The engine is notorious to leak, has multiple common problems, and on top of that, that was all not enough, it loves to burn oil. I mean, I've never seen an engine burn oil as much as that, even the ones we're going to talk about in a little bit. And there was no repair for it, even if you took care of the car, they still burned oil. That's just, that was the icing of the cake, and if you add a little bit of sprinkle of frost, I mean, the whole car just falls apart. From brake lines to suspension to exhaust and the exhaust is so complicatedly made in the front the front pipe there's notorious to just flap break in half what were they thinking with this car it is the engine somewhat is diy friendly suspension not really and everything you take apart breaks rusty or not that's just they use too much thread lock on multiple bolts of the suspension of the, of the subframe in the front. It's just a nightmare. Every, every time I see one of these come in the shop, it's like, you are not worth the hour diagnosis for the next disaster that you have. And yet, I still see people spend ridiculous amount of money fixing their old 98 to 2002 Corolla, and it'll never be right. There will always be something wrong with them, they're not good. If you see them very cheap out there, they're cheap for a reason. And then you go one year over to 2003 and the price jump is massive. You can sometimes find the previous generation Corolla more expensive than the 98 to 2002 and that is for a very good reason. Please stay away. The other gem on the elimination list, and this is gonna surprise you, 2002 to 2004 Toyota Camry with a four cylinder. You can find these a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. But if you took care of this car very, very well and never let it overheat, you're probably not gonna sell it. But the ones, majority of the ones that are out there for sale, they've been overheated. And that engine in those years, and let's name the engine because it is a uh, giant offender. 2AZ FE 2.4 liter four cylinder. Now in those years, it was an okay engine. It was good but it had head gasket issues. The thread in the block would basically just rip out and there goes the block. You have to either rethread it or replace the block. And sometimes if you don't do the rethread job right, it fails again and again and again. And it all takes is one minor overheat for this to happen. 
It is much improved after 2004 to 2005 and 6. They're much better, but still, if you overheat them, they'll still do the same thing. So that is the bad start with the 2AZFE. If you see one of these Camrys out there for very cheap, skip it. If it's a V6, we're good, you're safe. If it's not, skip it. It ain't worth the risk. And continuing on, the 2AZFE. Uh, 2007 to 2009 Toyota Camry, 2006 to 2008 Toyota RAV4. They also had a 2AZ FE, but hey, they fixed the head bolt issues. But now they introduced another issues, mainly thanks to emissions requirements, but they have low tension rings and those low tension rings love to seize up. And now you have oil burning. Now, in fairness, Toyota did admit that problem and they did make a campaign and many people got their engines fixed and they have zero problems but if you go buy one that does, did not have that fix done and that fix had a limited time if you're buying one that did not have the fix you are making a grave mistake because it'll never end you're basically going to need a complete engine rebuild to place the pistons and rings and at today's prices for these cars that will total the car immediately and if you go buy a used engine Guess what? The new used engine has the same problem. It just doesn't make sense. Avoid these unless the owner comes to you with a receipt from the dealership that the engine was rebuilt with updated parts under the campaign, then you're okay to buy it. Only if it has, of course, good maintenance and it's in good shape. And so many people neglected these things so bad because they got sick and tired of them burning oil that they just neglected everything else. So you buy them, they look okay on the outside, but everything's leaking, everything is broken, everything makes noise. That's the typical, typical thing. Avoid these if they haven't been fixed. Continuing on with the 2AZFE offendedness. So the next generation Corolla after 2005 and 8 was an okay generation. It was disappointing, felt a little cheap on the inside, but it was a decent car, it was okay. Until they decided to put the 2.4 liter in some of the hotter models. And we're talking about 2009 all the way to 2013, Corolla and Matrix. If you are buying one of these cars, do yourself a favor and buy the 1.8 liter version. Some people will look at the 2.4, oh, it's a bigger engine, has more power, that's better. Wrong. Don't do that to yourself because those also burn oil. And I have seen so little of these get repaired under the campaign when it was going on that most of them did not get repaired for some reason. Owners just didn't bring them in to get them checked and repaired. Be careful with these. With, when it comes to a Matrix or a Corolla, the last generation of the Matrix and the 2009-2013 Corolla, avoid the 2.4 liter. Stick with the 1.8. Now, a last one on the Batty list is the 2001-2002 RAV4. Only those two years. And the reason I am saying that, otherwise the RAV4 is a great truck as long as it doesn't have a sprinkle of rust. Talk about that in a second. But these had a problem with the engine computer, which also has the transmission computer. The problem is Toyota had a campaign, they replaced the engine computer, but the real problem is if you did not do that, the transmission will start shifting really harsh. If you continue driving it like that, you're going to destroy the transmission. So here's the problem and here's what I see con continuously. Any of these cars that had high miles, they've already went through this. They've already had a fix or the transmission replaced or whatever the case may be and they're good. But the gems, according to everybody else but me, the ones that had 30 and 40,000 miles that have been hidden in somebody's garage all these years, you go running towards this because it is essentially a brand new car from the old golden era of Toyota. And then you drive it and it shifts harsh. I'm like, ah, it's probably an old car or place. Nobody remembers that anymore. They had a serious problem. Be careful with these. Make sure if it starts shifting harsh, get it fixed right away. It's gonna be an expensive repair, but it could be a lot more expensive. And now, if you've been watching this video this long, I will share with you potentially the most important part of this video. Do you remember how I praised the trucks and I told you they're the best? They're, you can't really go wrong with Toyota trucks. They could actually in an instant switch it to being the worst Toyota you can buy. Bear with me here. Trucks are the number one victim of rust. 
they really don't do well with rust and Toyota have replaced frames, they did all kinds of recalls and still many of them are not covered by this. So folks, do yourself a favor, please. Don't buy a severely rusted Toyota truck, whatever it is, FJ Cruiser, Forerunner, Tundra, Sequoia, Tacoma, anything. Do not buy a rusty truck. And if you live in an area where salt use is, is an issue, you use basically like me, I live in Chicago, make sure you undercoat your truck, protect the frame and, and reapply the coating. This is super important, otherwise that very reliable truck will turn into your worst nightmare when the frame is just rotten away and everything is rotten and now the truck is just basically totaled. Here's this super reliable engine, super reliable everything but a rotten frame and you know what? Reliable parts don't hold themselves together without a frame. So be very careful with this and this really applies, this is my final advice to you if you're buying a Toyota, do not buy rusty ones. Now I understand we're looking at some of these cars are older you get if you're especially if you're from a state that doesn't have rust and you're buying online do not buy a rusty one do yourself a favor it ain't worth it there's always another one out there even in the in the rust belt where i'm at you're going to find the rusty ones and you're going to find the ones that the owner try to preserve them as much as possible those are the ones you want not the ones that are neglected or rotten and done leave those for somebody who's really not doing the research. You are watching this video, you're doing your research, leave the rusty ones, they're not worth it, trust me. And the last advice, and this is more to the times when this video was filmed. We have a shortage of microchips, we're in the middle or hopefully at the end of the pandemic, or not, I don't know. All the manufacturers are struggling with chip shortage. There's no new cars, people all of a sudden are buying all these used cars, there's a shortage of cars everywhere. Do not, under whatever circumstance, pay more for a used car and worse for a new car. New car is very simple, MSRP is the max you're going, not a penny more, any worth it. There's no car in the world that is worth it. And war used cars are worse. Do not overpay for these cars. Just because it's a Toyota, just because you did your research and it's a really good car and you really, really need a car, do not overpay for it. It is not worth it. Every car, especially Toyotas, has a value and that value is the value. Do not overpay for it just because there's a shortage. The shortage is not your fault or in fairness, not the manufacturer's fault either. But dealerships will take advantage of this, take advantage of you and your hard earned money to do this. They are super unethical. Please don't feed the shark. Don't do that because it ain't worth it. You're going to regret it. The prices will not be the same always when they drop. All of a sudden, you're underwater in this car, and that's the worst feeling ever. I hope this video was helpful or informative. I hope it helps you with your used car buying journey. I wish you the best on your car buying journey. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos, specifically the buying guides for each model, so you can pick out which one is good and which one is not. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.